Adam was a deeply partisan person. He did everything he could to make sure that Hillary Clinton became the next president. Um, and he's done everything he could since he failed at that to, to keep a cloud over the Trump presidency. Gowdy explaining why all nine Republicans on the Intel Committee called for Adam Schiff to resign as chairman. Let's bring in our headliner, Sean Spicer, former White House Press Secretary, Senior Advisor for America First Action. How you doing, Sean? Good morning to you, and thank you for being our, our headliner today. I don't think Adam Schiff's going to resign. I, I, I think that probably that would be a shocker if it were to happen. Um, what is your sense of the Mueller report? Whether all of it well, goes public it, or not, and and whether well, look, or not I, Democrats I, I think, then, uh, I'm getting to it. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll say this is a cover up if every redaction is not removed from the Mueller report. Is that where we are headed, Sean? I, I think that we can't let Democrats off the hook as to where they started this dialogue, which is that we need to protect Robert Mueller. He has the highest degree of integrity and professionalism, and we need to let. Uh, the chips fall where they may with respect to his investigation. The chips have fallen. Mr. Mueller has made it very clear that there was no collusion. The problem with the Democrats is they dug a, a hole so deep they don't know how to get out of it now, and they're doubling down. The reality is is that he issued his report. It said there was no collusion. Our Attorney General Barr has said he will release it to Congress somewhere around mid-April, and they're still not satisfied. The reality is, is that, A, he doesn't have to do it according to law, and, B, there's two issues with the current report. One is there's grand jury testimony, and, two, there's classified information in it. That he has to protect by law, just as he would with any other citizen. So Attorney General Barr is going above and beyond what he's required to do, and I think Democrats recognize that they're playing a losing hand, and so that the only way to do this is to pivot further away from what they originally started at, which was just allowing Mueller to, uh, to, to investigate this issue. Once he came up with a conclusion that wasn't what they wanted, they had to pivot to something else. Uh, so we're pretty much all on the same page here. Adam Schiff is not resigning, right? Um, but there are still no. calls. Okay. But Kellyanne Conway, if you asked her, she's still going to, you know, remain that he should. Here she is on Fox News Sunday, and then I wanted your reaction on this. Spent more time on TV than at that committee over the last however many years. And all nine Republican members have asked for his resignation. I certainly did it a week ago. The president has done it. He cannot be fair. That is one of the most important positions in the United States House of Representatives. He sees all the nation's secrets and he ought to step down. Okay, so we haven't even actually seen the Mueller report yet, so why don't we just wait until we see it? So, I mean, so the Democrats have now subpoenaed this report. I mean, when this comes out, do you think that's going to change anything when it comes to Adam Schiff? No, I mean, I, I, again, go back to what I just said a moment ago. I mean, Adam Schiff continues to talk about the fact that collusion's in plain sight. So on the one hand, the Democrats talk about how Bob Mueller was the right guy to do this, that his years of experience in this area made him unprecedentedly qualified to conduct this. And now Schiff, in the face of all of this, continues to say that not only was there collusion, but it's clearly obvious, so obvious that someone as experienced and with so much integrity as Bob Mueller, as they would have had you believe up until a week ago, couldn't find any of this. 2,800 subpoenas, 500 witnesses, and yet... He couldn't find it with this team of top-notch investigators and FBI agents, but Adam Schiff sure can find it. He just can't tell you where it is, but he knows it exists. Uh, Sean, here's the tweet from earlier today, this uh, on the Mueller report that we're just talking about here. Now that the long-awaited Mueller report conclusions have been released, most Democrats and others have gone back to the pre-witch hunt phase of their lives before collusion, delusion took over. Others are pretending that their former hero, Bob Mueller, no longer exists. In the end, I don't know how far we push this thing down the road. I, I, I think this is the problem. We've gotten to the point where, if you think about this just for a moment, think about the, the, what the attacks of the, the mainstream media and Democrats were. For the longest time, it was the president was undermining these institutions that we've so grown to respect and love with all this integrity. And yet here we are with the Democrats not getting an outcome that they like on the Mueller report. So what do they do? They say suddenly that this individual, Bob Mueller, that they revered, his work isn't good enough. It needs to go further. We need to investigate more. We need to see all the other ev underlying evidence. Where is the concern about them undermining the attacks? The conclusion was clear. There was no, no collusion. 
But since they won't accept that, they continued to attack the process and the person. The same thing that the president was accused of a while back with the intelligence community. But now that the shoe's on the other foot, the media and the mainstream media tends to ignore this and play patty cake with these same individuals that praised Mueller and the investigation and the, and the need to protect it, protect Mueller, and, and make sure that the conclusions came out the way yeah. they wanted. But once they didn't, then they entirely flipped themselves on their argument that they had been espousing for the longest time. We want to get your take on this report that just came out about the White House whistleblower telling a House panel yeah. about systematic security clearance, a problem there. Uh, Trisha Newbold, she's an 18-year uh, career individual at the White House. Um, she basically, oh, according to Politico, Politico yes. among them, saying that as many as 25 White House officials were granted clearance after initially being denied. Um, you know, obviously Jared Kushner and many others were among among the list of those. What do you make of the security clearance where these people were denied and then it was reversed? Pressure coming from other places to get them in the, into the White House. Yeah. So I, I think there are three things that, that, that I come to mind for me. Number one, uh, this individual, the, the White House should have, I mean, excuse me, that the House Democrats should have protected because she was a whistleblower, pretty much outed her by saying she's 18 years in the, in the agency. Here's exactly where she works. Here's how many years she has. Here's her gender. You might as well put her name on it. Number two, at the end of that release, they make it clear that we're not releasing the transcript. So on the one hand, they want all the Mueller report right away unredacted, and yet when it comes to accusing the White House of something, they make it clear in their own release that they have no intention of releasing the transcript of this individual. Third, I mean, let, let's see what, what she says, but ultimately security clearances are the ultimate discretion of the President of the United States. There's a big difference, and there's always a human subjectivity to deciding who gets one and who doesn't and why. That range is a big difference, right? So if someone had, you know, a number of, of small misdemeanors or, or traffic incidences or travel or something that may have normally precluded them something, but the President deemed that based on his relationship and his knowledge of this individual or the subject that they were working on, he had no problem with them seeing relevant material. Because, you know, even at the highest level, security clearances are always within a need-to-know basis. So the question is, did the president deem the particular individuals uh, appropriate to, to what they had to look at to conduct their job based on his knowledge or relationship with that individual. But we have a lot more to see, and I think that if, if the Democrats want to hold themselves to the same standard, then release the transcript, let us see what this individual has to say, who the individuals were, what the accusations or the reason that they were potentially denied one for. Uh, but, but then we'll have a lot more information to have a, of a useful discussion. Okay. Sean, thank you. Said a lot there. Thanks for coming thank back. Thank you, Sean. Hope to see you again. Sean Spicer you back, reacting to all that breaking news now. Thank you.